like only you can, oh God. Lord, I need you to fix my heart, oh God. I need you to.
welcome, welcome. We welcome you in the name of Jesus tonight to our Church of God by Faith National Camp meeting on tonight. We thank God for you tuning in tonight to be a part of this great meeting that is taking place already. I pray that you have been blessed already by the spoken word, by the praise and the worship that has went up before the Lord. I tell you, I've been blessed and I'm looking for you to be blessed even more. We have a great lineup for you on tonight. And we ask that you would share this with someone right now and let them know that we are live right now. And we ask you tonight, amen, to get your hearts and mind in the place. But before, amen, we start our praise and worship on tonight, we like to honor, amen, our headship on the night. We like to start off, amen, by honoring the chief apostle of our organization, none other than Bishop James E. Mike Knight Jr. with Lady McKnight, ruling out of Williams with his wife, Lady Williams. Also, we like to also honor ruling out of Turner and Lady Turner, ruling out of Damon and Lady Damon, ruling out of Ware and Lady Ware, and special honor, amen, to our own, amen, ruling our emeritus, Dr. David C. Rook, and Mother Jessie McKnight, and Mother Maxine. We thank God for these great leaders that are yet leading and guiding us, that are yet following the lead of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight we ask you that you get ready to put your hearts and minds in the place to receive the word of God on tonight. Amen. I also like to tell you who I am. I am Pastor Nolan Williams here at Ark of the Covenant Church of God by Faith along with co-pastor Sheila Williams. Amen. Thank God for what he's doing here in the city of Rochester, New York. We praise God for the things that he's yet doing. But before amen, we kick things off, we'd like to open up with the word of prayer on tonight. Asking God's present, amen, asking God anointed to be in this service once again. So at this time, we ask that you would bow your heads for a word of prayer as we pray it right now. Father, we say thank you for what you have done in this camp meeting already. Lives have been changed. People have been touched by the spoken word that is spoken, amen. The praise and worship have shifted their hearts and minds that move, amen. And we just pray that God, you continue to do work in this camp meeting, oh God. We pray that God, you continue to pour out your Holy Spirit. And we pray tonight, souls will will be saved that souls will be added to the kingdom of God so save and deliver on tonight bless the spoken word that shall be spoken on tonight God I even pray that God you will bless the praise and worship that comes before you tonight because she said oh God they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth oh God and we want to do just that God we want to worship you in spirit and in truth oh God so bless God move God shift God deliver God on this night God and we will give your name praise honor and glory God for what you're doing in this service on the night God we're looking for a ship we're looking for a move God we're looking for deliverance on the night God so bless God in the service on the night we claim victory God over every part of our life right now our hearts our minds oh God we claim victory right now God that God you won't leave us like you found us on the night God so bless us oh God and we shall be blessed God keep us and we shall be kept by your mighty power. So we thank you, God, for what you're doing right now and for what you're about to do in the service on the night. In Jesus' name, we pray. We thank you. Amen and amen. Tonight, we want to come before you once again with our theme scripture on tonight. Philippians 1 and 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because I believe there's something that God is still working on. I believe there's something that God has still got to move in our hearts and our minds. I need to hear the song down south, amen. They say, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And I believe tonight that God is still working on somebody. I believe in that, that you, as God is working on you, you will become better in what God has called you to do. I want you to claim victory in your life right now. I want you to say that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that will strengthen you right now. So at this time we're going to get ready to bring our national praise and worship team before you on tonight. We ask that you prepare your mind for Minister Punch Baldwin, amen, as well as Minister Devin, amen, McKnight, as they come before you on tonight to get ready to bring our national praise and worship team before you on tonight. At this time, our national praise and worship team.
so I pray that you was blessed by national praise team. I tell you, we thank God for the awesome singing, amen, the praise and worship that I went up before the Lord on tonight. God is certainly good to us, and we are must to praise and honor and glorify his name for on tonight. So I pray that you will bless, amen. I pray that something that was sung on tonight has touched your heart, has touched your spirit. But at this time, we want to, amen, kind of shift our attention just a little bit. And tonight, amen, we'd like to introduce you, amen, to our ministry spotlight on tonight by financial solutions. So at this time, amen, we bring before you our ministry spotlight on tonight. It was July 10th, 2017, exactly four years ago today, that Financial Solutions issued its first investment certificate. Please join us in celebrating our four-year anniversary. According to Emeritus Bishop James McKnight Sr., it was more than 50 years ago that his father, ruling elder H.A. McKnight, envisioned members of the Church of God by faith pulling their resources together to fund ministry. Elder McKnight transitioned in 1966, shortly after returning from a trip to Africa on behalf of the church, and his dream seemingly died as well. His grandson, Bishop James McKnight Jr., ascended to the church's fourth presider and soon casted Vision 2020, which included the establishment of a church financial institution. Subsequently, the Executive Council met with Kimberly Smith and Angela Robinson during its 2017 February planning meeting in Jacksonville, Florida, and explored the prospect of a national credit union. This meeting concluded with a commitment to taking whatever steps necessary to the establishment thereof. Bishop McKnight did not leave this pursuit to the team alone, but he too was involved in seeking the right direction for the church. His passion was fueled by an exasperation with the position several member churches were in with their lending institutions. God graciously guided Bishop McKnight and the team on a different course, and they aggressively sought to establish a church extension fund, which had been a catalyst in several major denominations for nearly 100 years. A church extension fund was a new paradigm for Church of God by Faith, but it is not a novel idea. Thus, Church of God by Faith Financial Solutions was incorporated in April of 2017 in the state of Florida as a not-for-profit organization. Its initial goal was to resource its affiliate churches, relieving them from high interest loans and providing more margin for ministry. But ultimately, Financial Solutions was founded to fund ministry so lives can be changed. This pursuit has continued to expand and gain momentum over the last four years and has grown to what we know as our founding source for ministry. We prioritize excellent customer service and maintain high standards in everything we do. Our investor base is growing continually, and they are telling their friends and family about us. We are providing excellent interest to hundreds who are using their savings and retirement assets to fund ministry and change lives. From its small beginning, Financial Solutions is on course to soon exceed $10 million in total assets, and thus far, it has helped 35 churches with their loan and facility needs. This is an unlikely story, and our success belongs to the Lord. We are truly grateful for everyone that has been a part of this journey. And so, from our board members to our amazing administrative team, to every large and small investor, and to our parent organization, Church of God by Faith, Inc., thank you for the last four years. We are excited and eager to see what God is going to do in the next few years. Financial Solutions is a good work in progress. Well, Lord, we praise God. We pray that you have been blessed by our ministry spotlight on tonight. We pray that, amen, that you see the imprint that we're trying to make, amen, throughout the world, amen. We pray that you would join in with us as we try to make our footprint known throughout all the world here at Church of God. There's great things that we are yet trying to do. There's people that we are trying to reach. And there's people in hearts and minds that we're trying to bring to the kingdom of God. And it's going to take people like you that's going to help make the difference. If you kind of look at me now, you kind of see that I got on Amy, my construction outfit here because we're still on the construction. There are still things that God is yet doing in our life. But it's going to take your seed on tonight 
to help us to finish the project. So tonight we ask that you prepare your hearts and minds to get ready to give on tonight. Because the word of God said, give, and it shall be given back to you. Press them, shake and together, run it over, shall men give unto your bosom. And then he also said in the word in Corinthians, amen, he gives seed back to the soil. So as you continue to sow, God will, amen, bring the seed back into your life. You got the plant for, what, for where you want to go and for what you want God to do in your life. Because I can remember, amen, as I was praying and seeking the face of God, amen, to bless us with the sanctuary, he told me the plant he told me to give and that's one of the things i begin to if you look on your screen tonight you will see right on your screen how you can show how you can give amen so you can text it you can mail it in so get ready amen to give your seed on tonight and as you give this seed i promise god is going to bless you for the seed that you sow sow it for your ministry sow it for your home sow it for your children whatever that seed need to be you sow it tonight and watch god do a great work in your life at this time, the Ministry of Giving. Praise the Lord. We're getting close to time, amen. Just before we hear the word of God on tonight, we first like to bring our featured artists for tonight that will be singing to you on tonight. We like to introduce to some, present to others, amen. None other than the Williams Singers were first organized by Reverend Charles Williams as a musical outlet for his young family. In 2002, a tribute to their father, the three brothers, Darnell, Desmond, Desiree recorded a live album showcasing a song Charles had written for them. They soon found success outside their home of Indiana and began touring the country supporting acts like Lee Williams, the Spiritual QC, the Captain Spiritual, Vicky Winans, and Dietrich Haddon, just to name a few. The trio known for their hit song, Been Good. And in real time, in early 2017, landed them number 25 on the top album chart, on the top album gospel chart 25, and two stellar nominations. We have a very, very powerful speaker on tonight, a young man that I've known for some time, a young man that I went to school with, graduated with, but at this time, we will prepare, amen, to introduce our speaker of tonight. Our speaker of tonight is Pastor Jonathan L. McKnight. He is the youngest son of the late Bishop 
James E. McKnight, and also the son of Mother Jesse McKnight. He was born in Gainesville, Florida. He also was a member of the Gainesville Church of God by faith. Pastor McKnight is the founder and senior pastor a sanctuary of praise in Orlando, Florida. He is an anointed speaker, teacher. Amen. He is a man of God. That's a praying man. A man, amen. That amen believes in prayer because we know that prayer changes things. And he's an author. He's a singer. He also is a father. Amen. Amen. Jonathan McKnight the second. Amen. So we thank God for his son as well. But most of all, amen. We thank God for him being saved, sanctified, and filled with God's Holy Spirit. Amen. He's well known throughout the church of God by faith. And not just the church of God by faith, but he's well known throughout the United States of America. Amen. He's also a made an appearance on TBM. So we ask that you get your hearts and minds ready tonight. Amen. To receive this great man of God. He just released his latest CD. Prayer is a must. Amen. And I want to tell you, get that CD. It will bless you. It will certainly lift your heart and it will certainly lift your spirit. So Amen. prepare Amen. is down for these young men. I want you to get it ready tonight to hear some foot stomping, some hand and clapping, some good amen, down home singing amen. Get ready to put your hands together. If you may be home, amen. Let's get ready to lift our voice, amen, and get ready to receive these young men of God. At this time, we present this time and introduce to other, amen, none other than the Williams Singers. <laughs> I'm not 
y'all having a good time? Listen, before we go any further, we want to thank Bishop McKnight and all the members, all of you that are part of the By Faith Fellowship. And uh, we want to thank you all for inviting us to virtual camp, to the virtual camp meeting this year, 2021. Um, we really count on the privilege to be here. And um, just like your theme says, uh, it's, it's, it's good that God is going to fulfill that work that he started and he's going to continually perform it until the day of Jesus Christ and so once again we want to tell you all to stay on the wall and we just want to thank you for having us and uh, are we doing all right I can't hear y'all are we doing all right all right listen listen we're going to do a little choir song if you don't mind uh sam you can you can go and bring me in uh if you know this song i just want y'all to help us sing it this is a little old song that we heard down through the years and if y'all don't mind we just want to do it a little bit of If you know it and you believe it, if you know it and you believe it, some of y'all out there done tried everything. Here's my testimony. Listen here.
Can I get a witness here? And uh, I realized that the, the only way, God, that I can please the Lord is to give God a mouth. Yes, that included my very own life. Can I get a witness in here? And uh, I used to only want to give God half of my life. But uh, one day, one day, good God Almighty, yes, sir. Oh, one day, uh, one day, he found me yes. down on my knees. Somebody said I was wounded, weary, worn, and sad. Yes. But one day, one day, somebody got a one day experience yes. in here. Uh, Lord, one day. Uh, Turn your life around. I used to be turned. Turn your life around. I used to be turned. Turn your life around. I used to be turned. Turn your life around. I used to be turned. Turn your life around. I used to be turned. Turn your life around. I used to be turned. Turn your life around. I used to be turned. Tur
Jesus. When I think about Jesus, and everything you done from me, and everything you done from me, say. some praise I know you're watching us virtually here and I want you to give God some praise the William singers told us I used to be lost and somebody right now outside of myself I know they're from Indianapolis Indiana but somewhere in Florida somewhere in Georgia somewhere in Alabama somewhere in Mississippi somewhere in Texas somewhere in New York somewhere in New Jersey somewhere in Virginia and California I want you to give God a praise because you used to be lost and they let us know that when I think of the goodness of Jesus and how good he has been to me, we're crying out and understand that the Lord has been good. You ought to just praise him right here on a Saturday night and give God some praise because God has been good to us. And you ought to give him some praise. You ought to put in the remarks right now, wherever you're living, wherever you are. I used to be lost, whether it's in Jamaica, whether it's in the Bahamas, whether it's in Chile, whether it's in Haiti, whether it's in Zambia, whether it's in Nicaragua. You need to give God some praise and say, I used to be lost, but I thank God I have a praise in my spirit. Somebody ought to give God some praise right now. Somebody ought to give God some glory right now because God is good and he is worthy to be praised. My God, my God, God is good and he is awesome and he is worthy to be praised. I'm thankful unto God for his goodness. I'm thankful unto God for his mercy, for he is good and he is awesome and he is worthy to be praised. I want to say hello to all of our listening audience all over the world. We want to say to you right now that God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Somebody need to know and understand that you are at camp meeting. Welcome to the construction site of the kingdom in the church of God by faith. We're so glad and we're so happy to have you here.
Pastor Jonathan McKnight. I'm just telling you all over the world, tag somebody, let them know we are in camp meeting and God is doing some amazing things and he is worthy to be praised. We want to go and honor, first of all, our presiding bishop, Bishop James E. McKnight Jr., our presiding bishop and his lovely wife, First Lady Dolores, our entire uh, ruling elder board. We want to say God bless all of you and those of you who are listening around the world. We have an amazing board of leadership. Uh, Elder Turner, and we have Elder Ware, Elder Williams. We also have Elder Reginald Damon. And we're so grateful that also we have in the midst of our lives, we just want to honor, oh God, the patriots and those who are in our life who has mentored us in the gospel, none other than I honor my father, Bishop James E. McKnight, a senior emeritus and my lovely mother. We just want to honor Elder Rook from Rochester, New York. And we also want to let each one of you know that it's a blessing in all of their wives. We're so grateful to God that they are here to be able in this organization to let you know that we are gracefully excited about what God is doing. And to all of our superintendents and to all of our pastors and their wife, to my superintendent, none other than Dr. Alonzo Smith Jr. and his lovely wife, First Lady Kimberly. We welcome each one of you all and know that God is in total, total control. He is doing great things. He's doing awesome things. And this is a season by which I tell you, we ought to be grateful to the William Singers I was so blessed by you and knowing that I've heard your music and know that, that you welcome and all the other guests that has been on the platform here at camp meeting. I tell you what, I love the subject. I'm telling you something, I'm just a work in progress and God is doing great things in our life. Pastor Jonathan, United Sanctuary Praise Ministries in the beautiful city, Orlando, Florida. We're going to bring you the word of God in just a moment right here from our headquarters city in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, Florida. And we're right here in this, this amazing sanctuary right now, blessing God, the pastor, Dr. Cedric Matthews, Pastor Cedric Matthews, and his lovely wife, First Lady Phyllis Matthews. We bless God for you as being the host of this moment in this season, understanding what God is doing and knowing that he is doing great, he's doing mighty, awesome, and he's doing holy things. My assignment tonight is I'm getting ready to preach the word of God and teach you. And I just want to say to each one of you, thank you for being a part of this amazing camp meeting that is blessing people's lives. I want to go to uh, the word of the Lord from the book of Philippians 1 um, and 6. Philippians 1 and 6. I'm just going to reference that, but I have a main text that I'm by and turn I'm going to be able to uh, preach to you from I just want you to know that God is just good not some of the time he's good all the time and he is worthy to be praised from Philippians 1 and 6 I just want to read that it says being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ also go over to the book of Luke the 22nd chapter by which my text and my comment will come from that. Luke 22, 31 through 34 is going to be uh, the text by which we're going to deal with on tonight. What an amazing, amazing camp meeting it has been. And I'm just grateful unto God that we're able to be able to be in such a time as this. In the kingdom of God, we are just a work in progress. And I'm telling you, when I heard that subject, I say I know I'm one of the candidates of being a work in the process from Luke 22 verse 31 I'm going to read through verse 34 scripture says and the Lord said Simon Simon behold Satan hath desired to have you that ye may be sift you as that he may sift you as we but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto them, Lord, I'm ready to go with you, thee both into prison and unto death. Verse 34 says, and he said, I tell thee, talking about Jesus, Peter the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. I'm getting ready to use as a chain of thought, as a subject tonight, 
progress in the process progress in the process father i want you to bless this word bless the listeners bless our hearts bless our minds our soul god that you will have oh god deliverance throughout this nation throughout this camp meeting we pray for salvation we pray for victory holy ghost you preach in jesus name amen progress in the process we know that our bishop james e mcknight jr our visionary had the thought that was released unto him we are all a work in progress and when i think about that thought i think about so many times in the kingdom once we come to god and once we become saved many people tend to act as if though the process is over now that i'm saved but the reality of the matter is is that the process of your life in God is taking another dimension or another step when you give your life to Jesus. When we think of a process, it's a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. It's a series of operations on something in order to change or preserve it. Progress means to move forward onward moving advancement and gradually become better at a higher stage to be able to move further along than what you are now so many times in life when you understand the fact that we are all in a process no matter what your title is no matter what your history is no matter what your mindset has been no matter what your educational background no matter what city you were born in you are in a process because God is yet doing something in your life that we don't always understand when I think of the word process everything about our life has been a process and everything about our life is a process the process of birthing is a process when you birth something into this world life is a process death is a process dating is a process engagement is a process being married is a process divorce is a process ministry is a process being saved is a process and understanding that when God has to process us he has to take us through various channels in life for particular seasons as we can mature into him to a greater capacity. So many times, I don't care how much you pray, how much you read your Bible, how much you fast, how much you go to church, it doesn't really matter. You still will end up in some type of process. Many people go to God and they want God to be able to invoke upon them the power of getting to know God it's very difficult in many seasons of life to get to know God because the process of knowing God means oftentimes that God has to empty you of you so he can get more of him inside of you and that becomes a process the battle of your mind the battle of your soul the battle of your spirit is a process and I want to say to everyone out there who maybe is embarking upon a new walk with God or perhaps have ideology about Christianity and that we're all perfect that we're all in place and that everything is already in season and just because we come to church and just because we look and we have our titles and we have our suits and we have our hats and we told our Bibles it does not believe mean that we're not in a process every person in life God is taking you through and taking me through some type of process so that we can be able to be what we need to be for him now once you become saved, another process takes place because you are no longer in the world, 
now you're out of the world and sometimes you got to understand that as you go through the process you need to understand that God is teaching you something about yourself matter of fact to be honest with you I didn't learn some things about me until I understood that I was in the process so many times when people are in different types and various types of processes people will judge them in their process because they don't understand exactly what God is doing and the truth of the matter is sometimes I don't even know what God is doing because the process of how he is perfecting me is so intense until I don't even know how to handle what God is doing now somebody right now listening to me right now just because you're in a process just because you're in a moment of change it does not mean that God is not getting ready to do something major in your life sometimes when you're going through a process you need to understand that one of the greatest processes when you're having a walk with God is the process of change I'm talking about blindsided change I'm talking about something that was not prophesied to you something that was not spoken to you I'm talking about something that happened in your life or around your life that you never saw coming or that you never anticipated and sometimes you got to learn that it's the will of God for us to make progress in the process and sometimes the enemy wants us to push the pause button in life sometimes when we've been hurt sometimes when we've been betrayed sometimes when we've been devastated the enemy tries to put our life on pause so we can no longer progress in the process the process needs to understand that God will use anything that he wants to use in order to progress you in the process because I am just in a situation now where God is trying to perfect us he's trying to make us more like him some of the trials that we go through in life once we go through that trial we'll see God in a different way we'll see God in a different light and many situations in life I never understood God until I had to see another side of God the side of God to where you dealt with abandonment the side of God to where we sometimes have dealt with betrayal the side of God when we didn't even know what God was doing the side of God when we even know that situation was going to end up happening sometimes you can end up in brokenness and sometimes you can end up in loneliness but it does not mean that God is finished with you sometimes you might be on the other side of failure sometimes you might be on the other side of hurt and pain but it does not mean that you're not going to progress from that situation of the process one of the things I found out of this is that many times in life it might look like something is going wrong it might look like something is going against you but the Lord is telling me to tell you that there's a process in the period by which you're going through the change and understand that God is still God of your process that's why that he that begun the good work in you he's going to perform it he's going to carry it out he's going to see you through because God is getting ready to shift something divinely in your life so you will not be belittled or stop trying to progress in your process the truth of the matter is sometimes you don't even understand how bad the enemy wants you how bad the enemy is trying to attack your family trying to attack your ministry because once God begins a good begins a good work in you you'll begin to understand that the God that we serve is powerful enough to be able to get you to know that I am just in a process and sometimes you got to be understand this the church will look at you many times believers make the mistake of trying to judge somebody while they're in the middle of a process they'll try to condemn someone when they're in the middle of a process but one thing I love about God and that is God knows how to perfect me into a relationship with him when I'm in the middle of a process now sometimes when you're going through life the enemy will try to make you feel defeated he'll try to make you feel broken he'll try to make you feel disturbed because seems like you're not progressing in 
the process. Let me talk for a moment, and I want you to hear this, because sometimes when you're saved, the process does not seem like it is conducive to righteousness. So many times you can be in situations in your life, and as you're moving forward, and I'm going to get to Peter in a moment, I'm going to let you see in the process of this man's life how he had to continue to progress even though he was in a process. One of the things that the Lord said to me, he said, I want you to understand that he is absolutely making room for you. And I want to encourage every person that might be in ministry. I want to encourage everyone who maybe your church is not growing the way you want it to grow. Or maybe life is not moving the way you want it to move. Just because something appears to be growing, it does not mean that it is organic. Everything that is growing does not mean that it's organic. Now, sometimes when you're going through life, you have to deal with the fact that something is moving, but it's not really growing. Moving, but not really growing. Organic means that there's something that's natural in the situation, and there's something that does not have the impurities or the added preservatives. You know, we're in a health conscious nation now. We're in a health conscious world, and many people want things that are organic, meaning that there's no impurities. There has not been added preservatives in it. And sometimes we got to understand that we have to make sure that the church is in the state of being organic. In other words, it's just about God. It's just about him getting the glory it's not about a title it's not about a position but it's an organic relationship with God so if God does not give me a car if God does not give me a new house if God does not give me bling and things it does not mean that I'm not progressing the progression by which I want to move in God is first of all I want to make sure that I have a real relationship with God Matter of fact, I don't have to be in every association. I don't have to be in the clique. I don't have to always be in the group. I want to make sure that what God is doing in my life and doing in your life is that it's real. The Bible says the time has come to where we are worshiping him, but they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And sometimes when you're going through the organic stages of your life, you're going to lose some people because you have a standard by which you are to live by see God is still working on us and sometimes yes we make errors and we often make mistakes we all do but the point of the matter is you cannot forfeit the standard of righteousness for the emotionalism or the system of this world I have the Lord is saying me to say to you right now we got to make progress in a chaotic world we got to make it up in our mind that we're going to trust God no matter what. We're going to praise him no matter what and know that we're in a society now to where there's a global pandemic. But that does not have to stop me from winning souls. That does not have to stop me from building a prayer life. That does not have to stop me from having worship because I am making it up in my mind that tonight I'm going to progress and let God continue to help me in this process. Everything growing, as I said, is not organic because we got to make sure that if it's of God, that the fruit of the situation now is the fruit of righteousness. Just because we gather, just because it seems like it's popular, it does not mean that it's been endorsed by God. That's not hating on anyone else. That's not hating on the denomination. That's not hating on the church. That's not hating on individuals. The reality is, is the world needs to see progress in the process. In other words, the world needs to see that as God is working on us, we're still loving, we're still reaching, we're still teaching, and we're still understanding that he's working on me and he's working on you. I got to stop there for a moment before I close out and let you understand that God is working on me and he is working on on you I believe that one of the greatest travesties in the church has been this is that sometimes when some person is in a process we're so busy analyzing and sometimes criticizing their process and we don't even understand what God is doing to mold and make that person into what God wants them to be so many times if I see a brother going through something or a sister going through something I become a commentator to what's going on in 
in their process and we judge each other many times by the process that we're going through not having a clue what God is doing in my life I want to send this out to the world right now those of you who are going through situations, those of you who are fighting silent demon or private struggles, I want you to know that if you just keep searching after God, God will give you what you need in that situation to let you understand that he's going to bring you out of that process. And when you come out the process, you're going to have more power than you had when you were going in the process. Some of us right now have a testimony already. I've been been through things that I don't look like I've been through things that I don't sound like I've been through things that I've have gone through life and there's been situations and insecurities and there's been instabilities in my life but if it had not been for God who was on my side I don't even know where I would be in the process thank God that God is not like people the Bible says in Lamentations 3 the mercies of the Lord are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness every morning I get up in the morning I can give God praise and give him honor understanding that there is progress in my process one of the things I want to say is the ingredients of God's process are sometimes ingredients that are not popular. The process of disappointment, the process of failure. Sometimes betrayal is in the process. Sometimes shame is in the process. Sometimes embarrassment is in the process. Sometimes bad choices is in the process. Sometimes chastisement is in the process. Sometimes correction is in the process. Sometimes humiliation is in the process. Sometimes tears is in the process. Sometimes bewilderment is in the process. But you need to understand, I'm just a work in process. See, there are a lot of people that God will have to allow certain things to happen so we don't become too prideful or too arrogant. The Bible says, humble yourself therefore up under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. And sometimes being humbled by God is not a good feeling. Sometimes when God literally has to chastise us, with sometimes chastisement. I remember, you know, I remember I told this story uh, to my church the other day. On, I was on a call with some of my seniors and I, I remember one time my mother my mother she told me she said she said I'm gonna have to spank you I'm gonna have to whip you and I, she said I'm doing this I'm doing this cause I love you and I said well mom the way this feel right now I don't need you to love me today I just need I just need to be out of this in other words I don't want to go through the process I want to ask you a question have you ever gone through something in life and you said to God and you wanted to say to God God I don't want to go through this God this is too much God this hurts too bad God is so much in a process to where I don't want to walk into one's church it's so much in a process until I don't even want to go to the family reunion it's this process is so trying and so testing until I don't even want to go home I don't want to go to work if I can just get to a place of isolation and just stay there until the process is over but I want to bring you to the biblical character by which I chose that the Lord said I want you to determine what their process is I want you to talk about Peter I want you to talk about who I built the church upon the foundation I want you to talk about the rock I want you to look at his life and understand that anybody that I choose to do great things he is, his name was Peter eventually his name was going to be Simon Peter and I'll explain that in a moment and understand that anybody that I call I have to take through a process I called and I gave my son Jesus, but he had to go through a process. You cannot follow God and you will not be effective in God if you think 
you can just go to church on, on, on Sunday, get saved on Sunday. The following week, you are a minister. The following week uh, after that, you're an evangelist. And then the next thing you know, a month later, you're a pastor. And then you're an evangelist. And then you're a prophet. And then you're an apostle. And then you're a bishop. And look like the only thing that you've been able to go through a process is, is changing titles. But when God says, I'm not trying to change a title, I'm trying to change you in the process so you can have more me because I have purpose and destiny for your life. So here I am talking about Peter. The feminine version of Peter in the Greek was called Petra. So either you could be Peter as the man or Petra as the lady. I want you to understand something that no matter where you've been, no matter who you are, you are called to do something great. But God has to take you through a process. And the process needs to understand that no matter how much you know the Bible, no matter who uh, your parents are, and I'm going to give a personal testimony I had a, a, a great parents couldn't ask no more better for the parents by which God has placed in my life an anointed man of God and a praying woman of God but when I look at my life when I look at my life personally when I look at my life I still had to go through a process you ought to just put somewhere in the comments I'm just going through a process sometimes it didn't matter whether or not I prayed or sometimes it didn't matter whether I fasted it might have helped my mind it might have helped my spirit but it didn't stop the process there are too many people trying to act anointed but trying to dodge the process you cannot dodge the process in life or you will not have the spiritual progression you need in order to be successful in life so when I begin to think about my own life I begin to say you know what I got I was raised in the church but I still had to go through that. I had godly parents, but I still had to go through that. Went to Sunday school, but I still had to go through that. Went to Bible study and went to prayer meeting, but I still had to go that, to that, go through that. I was in both choirs, but I still had to go through that. My God, I was on the, in the brothers' ministers' sessions, but I had to go through that. Got ordained as a minister, but I still had to go through that. Got ordained as an elder, but I still had to go that. Start pastoring a church, but the position in the kingdom by title does not eliminate the process by which God is going to have to take you through he has a plan for your process he has a plan for what you're going through because at the end of the day when it's all said and done you're going to be more anointed after this process than you ever been in your life so here now I take it up with Peter Peter being a disciple of Jesus Christ uh, the first thing I want to deal with is the invitation the Bible says the invitation will to follow Jesus he dealt with invitation in Matthew 4 and 18 after that he had a situation Peter was married and his wife mother got ill he's now in a situation because his mother-in-law is sick but Jesus had the right association in the process he had Jesus in his life Peter had Jesus in his life because he was following Jesus there was an answer in the situation because Jesus was able to heal his mother-in-law's fever now I've dealt with a situation I've had an invitation and now I'm going to Luke 5 when Peter had fished all night long and he didn't catch nothing so now I'm dealing with fatigue sometimes when you're going through the process you got to deal with fatigue sometimes when you're going through the process you just tired sometimes you're going through the process and you've tall I can't go home with nothing I can't go home empty I have somebody depending on me I have a wife I have my mother-in-law there I have my children there and I need something to happen for me because I'm in a situation now where I'm dealing with a situation of humiliation I need to understand that Luke 5 he said I told and we fish all night long but in the midst of the process God if you tell me to go back out in the deep deeper than where I was before I'm going to still be able to understand that there is victory in the process I've dealt with invitation I've dealt with situation and now I've dealt with hesitation and the Bible says Peter in chapter Luke chapter 6 he began to deal with identification and revelation Jesus said who do men say that I am 
Peter said, I'm in a process. I'm going through some things in my life, but at least I know who you are. Sometimes when you're going through life, you have to make sure that you keep the identification of who God is and the revelation of what God has done. So now I have gone through a situation. I've had an invitation to follow Jesus. And now I have a situation in my family. I've had hesitation because I've dealt with humiliation because my business is not going good. I fished all night and still empty. But the word of the Lord told me, go back out there again. I'm telling somebody right now, in the midst of your humiliation, in the midst of your brokenness, you got to go back out in the deep because nothing was caught because you was too shallow in your spirit. Sometimes faith will test you all over again. So now I had an invitation. I've dealt with a situation. Now I've had hesitation, but I had revelation of identification. But now in Matthew chapter 17, he's dealing with transfiguration. The Bible says he was on the Mount of Transfiguration and the Jesus was there and Moses was there and the Bible says three of the disciples were there. What do you do when you're in the middle of transfiguration? The Bible says that Peter was getting ready to try to build a, a, a tabernacle. No, no, no. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a process, you just got to stay in your lane. You just got to sit back and watch God and let God do what he wants to do because when God gets ready to bring you to the platform Form that he has for you you have to go through some transfigurations you got to have a season to where you can just sit there and let God deposit in you so you can mature into what God wants you to do I've dealt with invitation I dealt with situation I dealt with hesitation I've had to deal with revelation and now I'm dealing with transformation but there's another part of this story that Peter had to go through because he was just in progress in a process the Bible says that there was a time when it was really dark and the disciples was in the boat and the wind were roaring the wind were blowing and it was the, the water was beating into the ship and and they looked and they saw a spirit they saw something that they thought was a spirit and the Bible says they thought it was a spirit and Peter looked out and the disciples looked out and guess what happened they had to deal with a situation to where God is coming through his son towards me Jesus is walking towards me and I'm in such a situation to I really don't know whether it's him. And then Peter asked a question. He said, Lord, is it you? So now I'm dealing with speculation. If it's you, bid me to come. Now I need confirmation because sometimes you can get in your life and you can get in the season that's so, so testing until you don't want to make a move until you know that it's God that's confirming you to make the move. I challenge you prophetically not to make another move unless you have confirmation that it's God who's calling you to make the move. Now, after the confirmation, Peter had to experience separation because he was in the boat with a bunch of boat talkers. I want to ask you a question right now. Who's in your boat? What is your boat saying? Who's in your boat? And what is your boat saying? Sometimes when you're going through life, you go through situations and you're dealing with boat talkers. You're dealing with people who will be with you, but they will not support you. You're dealing with people that sometimes you got to step out and bust a move because there are doubters around you. There are silent haters around you. There is spiritual perpetrators around you. They have a tone of Jesus, but they don't have the power and the faith by which to step out of the boat and walk with him. So now Peter has dealt with this in this process. He's dealt with identification, transformation, hesitation, invitation, situation, and now he has to deal with speculation of who's around him. Can you imagine being around, the, see the boat represent the church. Can you imagine knowing that there's a call on your life, but the people around you refuse to affirm that God's hand is on your life. I want to encourage all of you who know your heart is right, who know that God has his hands on your life. If you have to step out the boat and be able to go to Jesus with just you and him, I want you to understand this, that i rather sink trying to get to Jesus than to stay in the boat with nobody that doesn't want him. The devil is a liar. I hear the Lord say, some of you all right now, you've been fighting 
the opinions of so many others until you can't step out and be what God wants you to be. But I hear the Lord say, you're getting ready to make process, progress. I'm telling you something, when my life changed personally in ministry, when I got delivered from people, when I stopped letting people's opinions stop what I know God is calling me, I'm not trying to prove to myself my heart to people who heart is not right. I'm not trying to prove to others who really are not within the best interest of what God is doing in my life. The Lord said to me to tell you right now, you are a water walker. You are not a boat talker. There's things that God wants to do in your life, but you got to bust the move right now because you in the process, but you got to make progress in the process. In my closing, I want to deal with one area of this message that I believe the church has failed and that is the garden of Gethsemane the place by which you get frustrated the place by which that same Peter that walked on the water the same Peter that had had the ability to know who Jesus was who understood that he had revelation he had an invitation God healed a situation but right now I'm tired I'm just in the church but I'm tired I'm trying to pray, but my mind is willing, but my body is weak. And so many times I call it to where we got to externally act like we're so superhuman. And so many times we got to act like we're not hurting, but we really hurting. So many times we're just tired. The truth of the matter is you can get tired following God. The truth of the matter is you can get frustrated following God and the humanization of Peter had to deal with this issue the Bible says that he had fallen asleep can you imagine falling asleep when Jesus is hosting the prayer meeting that's somebody that's super tired and then the humanization comes in the process to where I am so tired I'm trying to follow Jesus the Bible says that when uh, he was betrayed by Jesus by Judas and the and the Roman soldiers came the next thing that happened is the Bible says I'm the one you're looking for in other words I'm in the process the process to where there has been an ordered betrayal an ordered divine betrayal you never know who you are in God until something that you were counting on literally turned on you. Church betrayal, kingdom betrayal, ministry betrayal, family betrayal, co-workers betrayal, neighbors betrayal, family betrayal. And it doesn't matter what the, pray, the, the, the betrayal does it's the fact that what does the humanization of who you are does to you and what does it do to you how do you turn and what do you turn into and sometimes I'm gonna be honest with you as I close my Bible and get ready to close this message in just a moment sometimes you can go back to your humanization Peter was a zealot the Bible says many people look for it in Matthew Matthew did not mention in the book of Matthew 26 it didn't mention who cut the servant's ear off but if you look at the book of John 18 and 10 it says Peter cut off his ear and the, man, the man's name was Malchus and he said to him I'm frustrated I'm finna I'm finna fight in my flesh and Jesus said stop it right now we don't fight in the flesh the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God some things you got to fight if you're going to progress in God. You got to let the spirit, you got to fight that thing on your knees. Sometimes you don't even touch it. Sometimes you don't even mess with it. You just let the process go through. You understand that God says, right now, I'm going to do something for you. And it looks like you're weak. But actually, I'm making progress in the process of who you are. They take Jesus. And here comes the humiliation. When, when, when the Bible says when Peter began to follow Jesus here's the human part of you and I want you to hear this and I want you to hear this good because every one of us been here before in our life is when your spirit is fighting you when your spirit now is telling you hey I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do I'm still gonna follow Jesus Jesus had already said Peter you're going to deny me. You're going to mess up. You're going to fall. Jesus already knew. That's one thing I love about Jesus. 
is he knows us better than we know ourselves. That's one thing about Jesus that I love. There was grace already in place because he said, I've prayed for you that when you become converted that your faith will fail not. What do you mean, pastor? Now some of you, the enemy doesn't want your car. He doesn't want your house. He wants your faith because he understands that it's faith that pleases God. And as I come out of this, I want you to understand that Peter humanization was left in the Bible so we can know that we can progress from that. He was following Jesus and one of, the, one of the people came and they had Jesus getting ready to take him to judgment hall and getting ready to prepare to crucify him. And somebody walked up on him and said, hey, didn't I see you with Jesus? He denied it. Another one said, you talk like him. See, that's the one thing I know and I love about Jesus. Once he gets inside of you, you're going to have or exemplify some of his characteristics. And then another man came up to him and said, I saw you with him. Bible says Peter began to swear Peter began to cuss and said no 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 didn't I tell you I'm not with him he was still in a process he was still fighting the struggle and I think that's one of the things that I I don't want to use the word because it's a strong word but I resent about the spiritual minds of people that some people cannot even get delivered in church because the church can't handle the process of growing. And some of us, we understand that we in this thing to grow. That's not a license to sin. That's not a license to do wrong. It's just a reality. There will be days when your humanity will fight your spirituality and it's a real deal there's a day when some words gonna come to your mind that you used to say in the streets there's some days when you don't feel saved but you know you are because you are in a process in my closing the Lord is saying to me after Jesus died and rose again with all power in his hands he said I want y'all to go in the book of Acts Acts 1 and I need you all to go there because if you're gonna progress you need consecration if you're going to possess the power of God you need preparation you need to be still so God can speak to you you can't always be on social media every day you can't always be on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and talk that you can't do it there's days when you're going to have to prepare your spirit and not let everything get into your spirit if you're going to progress there's something that can distract you every day but you got to go in through Acts 1 and have preparation so you can have consecration and then Acts 2 the Bible say on the day of Pentecost and when it was fully come the Bible said the Lord sent his spirit and now we're dealing with sanctification you got to understand that the Lord is ready for us to have consecration so we can have preparation so we can have sanctification and what's so powerful about Acts chapter 2 is the Bible says and this is what we want in this church the Bible says there were people from all nations and they begin to speak speak in tongues there has to be a language of salvation it has to be a language by which the soul is the most important thing in the church not just the building not just the position but we have to get to the point to where our focal point in life is salvation the soul is the greatest miracle the soul is what make God happy the soul is what makes heaven rejoice not a new car it's good to have things but if you're not soul conscious you're not ready to progress as I say this in chapter 3 he had demonstration the Bible says he was on a beautiful gate Peter this same man I've been through so much in life and now that he has the Holy Ghost he can demonstrate the power of God on his way to a prayer meeting there was a crippled man at a beautiful gate in an ugly position and the Bible says that Peter said silver and gold I'm dealing with expectation now but I got the demonstration of God power have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus rise up and walk and the man turned into a praise dancer walking leaping and praising God my last thing I want to share with you is Acts 4 was supplication the Bible says the church 
after they had the counter, they began to progress in prayer. The Bible says that the place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And from the supplication, God shook the place into debt cancellation. In other words, when they got the power of God in their life, they had demonstration. But when they began to pray that God adds souls daily, then the Bible says that none, all of them had all things common nobody was in debt and sometimes we're trying to understand how do we become debt free we become debt free when we have preparation when we have consecration when we have demonstration of God's power but yet we have the prayer life Lord have mercy to be able to shake nations to be able to shake our children I'm commanding that every generation of curse over our family every situation that's over our life that God is breaking it now in my final thing now he has illustration in chapter 5 and chapter 5 was where Peter got so anointed here's the same man that was sinking in the water here's the same man that cursed by the fire here's the same man that fell asleep in prayer meeting with Jesus but all of a sudden he walking down the street in Acts 5 and the Bible said he's became so anointed until his shadow he just walked down the street and they began to put people in his shadow because now I have the illustration of God's power now I've been progressing in this process I didn't give up because once you get anointed your process is about to shift to another dimension and as I close in chapter 12 after he got anointed he had to deal with Herod which was assassination I don't care who you are until you get anointed some attacks will not happen until you get anointed some haters will not be revealed until you get anointed some people will not understand who you are but when Peter got to chapter 12 the Bible says Herod had the spirit of assassination he had killed James and now he was trying to kill Peter but Peter was gonna make progress in the process because he had a praying church I command that every church needs to get back to prayer meeting I command that every father every mother need to rebuild an altar in your house to have a place so when the church cannot even meet together we still can have global prayer meeting because prayer changes things the Bible says that when he got to the place the Bible says that he had illumination. He had a divine, a divine, a divine angel who became a divine Baal's bondsman. Lord have mercy. When you're in a process and God is getting ready to do something great in your life, you need to understand that nobody can stop your purpose when God's hand is on your life. The Lord said, I want you to write down these five P's while you're in the process. The first P is poised in faith. The second P is you got to be patient in the process of your breakthrough. You can't rush the process. God has a set time. The third thing you got to understand is you got to, I want somebody to stop here and, and understand this is important. You got to pick what to fight. I ain't have nobody going to say nothing to me about that. You got to pick what to fight. Some things are just not worth fighting. Some things you don't need to fight because God already has it. They don't like you. They roll in their eyes at you. They don't endorse you. You don't even need to fight that because no weapon form that gets you gonna prosper the thing the fourth thing is you got to possess the power of the Holy Ghost and have a prayer life and the fifth thing is you got to praise radically until God turns your praise into a weapon and one thing that I wrote down the Lord said I want you to send this over to the world he said don't worry about people trying to label you because if they didn't manufacture you they can't label you. In other words, there's more into you than what others see. And God is getting ready to do something in your life. I want you to put in the comments, don't label me because God manufactured me. This is a God thing. As I finish this, I want you to understand that the word of the Lord says, he says, push your way through. Push your way through. Because 
You are in a process. You're going to win. You're winning now. If you have God, if you have your mind, and if you have your praise, you're going to win this battle. There's somebody right now. There's somebody right now. I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me good. Your process was not to break you. Your process was to make you. The Lord has begun a good work in you. And he's going to complete the work in you if you stay in him. Somebody, hands, right where you are in your home, where you're listening in this world right now, you need to tell God, God, fix me in the process. Just take me. Mold me. I think one of the greatest things that God has done in my life is I can be honest with him. God, I'm hurt. God, I'm frustrated. God, I feel humiliated. He said, I want you to bring everything that concerns you to me. I want you, I want you to, to make progress in the process. So maybe, Pastor, your church not growing like you want to. Maybe, First Lady, you don't feel like no one cares. Maybe, maybe you just tired of church. Maybe you're praying for your children and it look like they're getting worse. Maybe it looks like your, your problem is growing. The more you pray about it, the stronger the stronghold seems to come. Looks like the generation of curses raising this ugly head all over again. But I heard the Lord said, I'm getting ready to progress you in the process. Because where are you going now? It's getting ready to be much greater than where you've been. I want to share one personal thing with you, and I'm going to pray with you. There was a season in my life when I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision because I was blindsided. I was blindsided by some unexpected trials and tests, some stuff that I didn't see coming. One day the voice of the Lord said to me, what you going to do? He said, I want you to start a Bible study called Growing From This Place. Now all over the world, people call in on that Bible study on Thursday evenings. But really, I was just saying to God, God, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of, I'm tired of the commentators of church how the people acting like they know what's going on with me and I'm trying to figure out what's going on with me I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out where do I go from here there's some people right now you you're asking yourself where do I go from here what do I do next and I hear the Lord saying what you're going to do next is you're going to forget those things which are behind you and you're going to reach for those things which are before you there are some people right now, up under the sound of my voice, you're getting ready to make the greatest decision you ever made. That is, first of all, if you haven't already, coming to Jesus. The second thing you're going to do is recommit. And say, God, you know, our relationship has not been on point lately, and it's not your fault. I left my first love. You didn't leave me. I left you. I, I was tired. I was humiliated. I was frustrated. I didn't know who to trust. I didn't know who to look to. But from this message tonight, I made it up in my mind that I'm not going out like this. I'm going to be all that God wants me to be. If that's you, I want you to lift your hands where you are and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. I believe that Jesus died and rose again and got up with all power in his hands. And I accept Jesus as my personal Savior.
if you just gave your life to Jesus I want you to put in the comments your name where you're from and that you just gave your life to Jesus that's number one number two I want to deal with the people who strayed fallen tired humiliated you already know what's wrong what's wrong is is that you and God are not besties right now you, you need God to take you with your mess or take you with your sins or take you with your struggle somebody right now you might be sitting on Saturday night you might have your beer on the table you might have your joint in your hand you might be struggling getting ready to go out somewhere but you want to watch this message I challenge you to just stay put and let God work on you and say I'm going to make progress in the process just say God I'm sorry that I let you down I'm grateful that you still love me I'm thankful that grace was still in place and right now I make the decision that I'm giving my heart back to you I'm making the decision that I'm just a work in progress that's person number two the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pray for those who's dealing with some struggles who's dealing with some insecurities who's dealing with some fears some anxiety some pain that you don't even want to tell anybody how bad you really feel some shame some hurt some devastation see I'm gonna tell you something there was a time in my life I didn't want to show up to church I didn't, I, I didn't want to go to a church camp meeting I didn't want to go to a church convention because I had too many so-called believers that were rich in comments but bankrupt in compassion I just wanted to stay put and stay home but then I started thinking about my purpose is in the potter's hands my purpose is in God's hand. There's more ahead of you that God wants to do. And I'm going to pray that you get the strength to start now. The mistake was not big enough to stop your purpose. The hurt is not bad enough to stop your healing. And today, right now, I speak over your life in the name of Jesus. That God, you blow a second wind in their life. That you heal their fears. I come against the guilt and the shame and the condemnation. I come against the brokenness, the emptiness, the humiliation, the frustration in the situation. I ask you, God, to heal them and give them a fresh start. I'm asking you, God, to change their life forever and give them the power of the Holy Ghost so they can fulfill the destiny by which you call for their life and I command it to be so in Jesus name I challenge you to put in the comments I'm back I'm back and I'm better the last thing I want to say to you is this the greatest thing that can stop your progress is unforgiveness it hinders your prayer life it makes you bitter it keeps you bound free yourself and forgive whoever you have to forgive let it go and let God handle the matter and I promise you you'll start making progress in your process I hope this message has blessed you. I'm elated that you're joining us in Camp Meeting 2021. We're just all a work in progress. God is still working on every one of us. He's working on me. He's working on you. He's working on your children. He's working on your family. Because at the end of the day, this is just a construction site. And we're all in the kingdom of God trying to allow him to build what God wants.
to build in us. I say to you, blessings over you and blessings over your family. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we absent one from another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And know this, your best days, starting now, and get ready for God to allow you to live your best life. God bless you. Well, we praise the Lord. Pray that you have been blessed by the spoken word on tonight by Pastor Jonathan L. McKnight. We pray that, amen, your soul has been uplifted. Amen. Your hearts and minds have been encouraged. We thank you for tuning in to our service on tonight. And we look, amen, for you to tune in tomorrow to hear the conclusion of the matter from our chief apostle, none other than our very own, Bishop James E. McKnight, Jr. May the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We look to see you at our next meeting. God bless you as I pray.